the word of the Lord. In the first Samuel chapter 15 and 16, to online word sold through MP3 or YouTube channel on their We'd like to suggest the three positional questions. Number one, <coughs> in the first three, now go and attack Amalak and utterly destroy all that they have and do not spare them, but kill both the man and woman, infant and nursing child, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. What did the soul of the king do in the context and what can we learn from here? Question 2 in chapter 15 verse 22. So Samuel said, had the Lord as a great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is a better than sacrifice and to hear than the fat of a lens. What does it mean with other verses? And how can we apply it to our lives? Last question in chapter 16, verse 14. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. What does it mean, and what can we learn from here? In the last time in the first Samuel chapter 14 verse 52, now there were the fierce word with the Philistines all the days of Saul, and when Saul saw any strong man or any valiant man, he took a shame for himself. God has been working to choose a man after his own heart as a king for his glory in the first Samuel 13, verse 11, 14, basically saw disobedience uh, uh, to God by offering and by himself, uh, sacrificing by himself, sacrifice only limited to priests. But while Saul took a strong or a valiant man for himself, this observed the that God was doing in his way and in his time to replace Saul with a man after his heart toward David, the next king. Now, in the chapter 15, Saul the king rejected the word of God in the second time. And in the chapter 16, David was anointed through Samuel by God in the first time. First one, Samuel also said to Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore, he is the voice of the words of the Lord. Samuel made sure Saul to heed the words of the Lord after his first disobedience about his priest law to offer a burnt offering. Nobody is allowed to alter the word of God, such as the prophecy in the scripture, moved by the Holy Spirit, as Peter warned before his death. God does not warn us needlessly. Cross reference right there. Verse uh, 2. Then said the Lord of hosts, I will punish Amalek for what he did to Israel, how he ambushed him on the way when he came up from Egypt. God reminded Israel of Amalek, the type of flesh, to brought out as God told the Moses. Although we don't know why God says God has a good reason to say it because he is good and has foreknowledge. 
Grant chapter 25, verse 17, 19, close reference. Verse 3, now go and attack Amala and utterly destroy all that they have and do not spare them, but kill both man and women, infant and nursing child, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. God commanded the soul to utterly destroy Amala as God uh, commanded the Israel through uh, Moses to utterly destroy all other pagan heathen, such as Hittite, Amorite, Canaanite, Paradise, and so on. The king of Amorite was Aga, whose descendants uh, Hama sought to destroy. It should be multiplied and it is death, but to your spiritual mind it is life and peace. So God wants us to destroy utterly flesh things, all cross reference right there. But suppose so Saul in cows in the food soldiers and tenor. And so came to a city of Amalak and lay in wait in the valley. Then Saul said to Canaanite, go depart, get down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For you showed the kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Canaanite departed from among the Amalekite and Saul attacked the Amalekite from Hevila all the way to Shur, which is the east of Egypt. He also took the other king of the Amalekites alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul, the people, spared the Agak and the best of the ship, the oxen, the cat, uh, peppling the land and all that was good and were unwilling to utterly destroy them but everything despises and worthless that they utterly destroyed verse 9 the superior aga and so on was inconsistent with the utterly destroyed showing souls disobedience to God verse 10 now the word of the Lord I greatly think the answer said is that I ever set up so or he had turned back from following me and had not performed my commandments and it it grieved the Samuel and he cried out to the Lord all right. Repent and regret are synonyms. Also means the same of feeling sad in verse 35 but the second meaning of the repent implies change one's mind in verse 29 god is eternal and doesn't change he is immutable to avoid a possible misunderstanding as the second meaning over uh, repent king james version used the uh, the regret just expression of the God's set feelings uh, for souls uh, rejecting the word of the Lord to utterly destroy Amalek rather than to repent in King James Version. God does not lie nor repent, which means to change his mind. So in New King James Version, to repent the word is replaced with sorry to God and the most of all to Judas, just for the expression of sad feelings in order to avoid the misunderstanding. But the repent word in New King James Version is still used as it means to change one's mind to God for the kingdom of heaven or cross reference right there. 
Verse 12, so when Samuel rode early in the morning to meet Saul, it was told of Samuel saying, Saul went to Carmel, and indeed he set up a mon uh, monument for himself. The commandment. Uh, uh, so we can see you know, he has a pride. You know, indeed, uh, uh, he set up you know monument. Uh, also, I performed the uh, commandment uh, of the law, although he uh, disobeyed God's uh, uh, word. But Samuel said, "When Dan is disappointing of the ship in my ears." and the rolling of the auction which I hear. And so it said, they have brought them from the Amalekites. For the people spared the best of the sheep and the auction to sacrifice to the Lord your God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said to Saul, Be quiet. And I will tell you what the Lord said to me last night. And he said to him, Speak on. So Samuel said, When you little in your own eyes were you not uh, head of the tribes of Israel, and did not the Lord anoint you king of Israel? Now the Lord sent to you on a mission and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? And so it said to Samar, but I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me, go to back up. And the people took of the and the best of things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. Obeying God is better than burnt offering, verse 22. So Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offering and sacrifice as uh, in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed the, the fat of the rams. Question 2. Obeying God is better than burnt offering and sacrifice. Heartless services are not accepted by God. Services must follow hearts to love God mostly. For example, obeying God, obeying His word, heeding God, heeding His word, a contrite heart and a broken heart to iniquity, brought uh, or injustice <coughs> to do good, seek justice, desire mercy or desire to uh, knowledge of God, heart of a prayer, willing offering, or tithes. In the New Testament time, through Jesus Christ, our services for the Lord must follow uh, to love But there is offerings according to so you may see a uh, close reference, verse 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry, because you have rejected the word of the Lord. He also has rejected you from being king. So the disobedience to God's word to alter this way, Amalai, was the his rejection of his way. That's a rebellion or stubbornness against the Lord such as uh, witchcraft, which is a spiritual doctrine, such as a sorcery, medium, service upon another God, abomination, child sacrifice, or a 
So, such is the brutal adulteries of uh, the violation of the first and second commandments uh, over the Ten Commandments. Verse 24. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your word, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. So fear the people, the fear of man is a snare of death, but fear of, uh, or holy fear of the Lord is a safe or a fountain of life. So we should honor the Lord always. If we look for law first, in life or ministry, we would follow his direction about how to do people. Now, they are falling and return with me. They worship the Lord. But Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you in King uh, or Israel. And as Samuel turned around to go away, so the seated the edge of his wall and it tore. So Samuel said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today and has given it to a neighbor of yours who is better than you. And also the strength of Israel will not lie, nor the land, so kingdom uh, depends. For he did not a man that he should uh, relent, he should uh, repent. So, no change. Verse 30, then he said, I have a sin, yet honor me. Now, please, before the elders of my people and people, Israel, return with me, that I may worship the Lord your God. So, confess his sin, but not from humble or contrite heart. So, they asked the Samuel to worship God before the public in order to honor himself rather than God. If we commit to sin, we had a better confess it from a contrite heart or a broken heart toward the Lord as soon as possible. The Lord may forgive us our sin. So Samuel turned back after Saul. Saul worshiped the Lord. Then Samuel said, Bring Aga king of Amalekite here to me. So Aga came to him cautiously. Cautiously. And Allah said, Surely the business of death is the past. But Samuel said, As your soul has made the women childless, so shall your mother be childless among women. And Samuel hacked the Agat in pieces before the Lord in Pilda. Then Samuel went to Rama, and so went up to his house at uh, Gibeah of Saul. Verse 35, Samuel went no more to see Saul until the day that, nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul, and the Lord regretted uh, or repented that he had made the Saul king of Israel. Although Samuel had to rebook Saul for his disobedience, Samuel mourned for Saul when God promised to take the hidden kingdom away. This is a great example for minister to rebook uh, with the Arathira. Uh, chapter 16. Now the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning of Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesh. A petal and might, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. But the Lord said, Take a half with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint for me the one I name to you. Samuel knew Saul would kill Samuel if Saul uh, knew an election of another king. Samuel asked God for his wisdom rather than he himself uh, feared of the man like Saul in verse 24. 
God gave Shema the wise direction to prepare for happy sacrifice and invite the Jesse family. So Shema did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem. The elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Do come peaceably. And he said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify your service and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse and his son and invited them to the sacrifice. So it was when they came that he looked at Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance uh, or at his physical stature because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as a man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. It's a fabric that the Lord does not look at outward appearance, but at heart to us. So Jesse called Arinadab and made him pass before Shema, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shema pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. So Jesse made seven of his sons pass the people of Shema. And Shema said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen thee. And Shema said to Jesse, Are all the young men here? Then he said, There remained yet the youngest. There he is keeping the sheep. And Shema said to Jesse, Send and bring him. For we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was a worthy and bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil, anointed him in the midst of his father, and the Spirit of the Lord came up and dead from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. Here is the first time when David, as the eighth king of Jesse, eighth son of Jesse, was a shepherd. He was anointed uh, uh, through Shema by God. Shema fully followed the Lord's direction with the non discourse of David's anointment of the king to Saul. Some things are sometimes better left to non discourse because the discord with town can cause a lot of damage. So it's best to follow is a uh, resurrection, uh, so uh, closed or non disclosed In the second time, when David was a ruler of the house of Judah, he was anointed to the man of Judah by God. And in the third time, when David, a ruler of all Israel, he was anointed through the elders of the Israel by God. Verse 14, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. In the Old Testament time, the Holy Spirit was in and out from a person. After David committed sin, he prayed to God not take his Holy Spirit from him. But uh, in the New Testament time, uh, when we believe in the gospel of salvation, the Holy Spirit sealed us, that is dwelling in us forever, to inherit the kingdom of God. So because of the indwelling Spirit, every Christian is greater than all the other believers in the Old Testament time, who the greatest uh, uh, was John the Baptist. God is a sovereign of good and evil. Here, an evil spirit distressed soul. In the New Testament time, an evil spirit never possesses a creature, even if the evil spirit may distress him from the sovereign God. Then we can pray and fast toward the Lord to bind the evil uh, uh, spirit in Jesus' name. So all uh, close reference uh, uh, right there. Then verse uh, 50, and Saul, servant, said to him, Surely a distressing spirit from God is troubling you. But our master now command your servant who are before you to seek out 
a man who is a skipper player on the harp. And he shall be glad he will play it with his hand when the distressing spirit from God is upon you, and you shall be well. 17. So Saul said to his servant, Provide me now a man. In plain, a man of a way, a prudent and a handsome person, and the Lord is with him. Therefore, Saul sent to messenger to Jesse and said, Send me your son, Daddy, who is with the ship. And, and Jesse took a donkey loaded with the bread, a skin of a wine, and a young goat, and sent them by his son, Daddy, to Saul. So David came to Saul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly. And he became his armor bearer. Then Saul sent it to Jesse, saying, Please let David stand before me, for he had found a favor in my sight. And so it was whenever the Spirit from God was upon Saul, that David would take the harp and play it with his hand. Then Saul would become depressed and well, and his stressing spirit would depart from him. It's a third of the sovereign God controls all things, distressing spirit, troubling soul. He is a servant to the fruit of David as a harp player, depressing soul. So David is becoming the armor bearer too. So work together to train David a good king over Israel. It's learned no matter what circumstances now either good or bad, we should trust God with all hearts. So we are already covered with three questions. Continue keep on prayer for uh, weather changes, damage, not only California and other uh, area too. Also keep on prayer for uh, the uh, feeding people from starvation and sickness, not only here in uh, South Sudan and you know, other countries as well. Uh, the uh, Israel and the Gaza area.